We believe in a doctrine called dispensationalism. In other words, we believe in dividing verses to the right group of people and right time period. Because if you do, don't divide the verses, then you're going to combine all the verses together and come up with major wrong doctrine. Now, one of the false doctrines is and heresies is called replacement theology. But not just replacement theology. You got the Black Hebrew Movement. You got Charles Rutherford. Uh, not Charles Rutherford, it's Garner Ted Armstrong, that's right, I believe. Garner Ted Armstrong and those cults that are trying to give a different teaching that the Jews are not really Israel. They do not believe Jews are from Israel. What they believe is this. They believe, now there is some sort of historical truth. They're not giving a complete lie. Satan does not give you a complete lie. He gives you a partial, partial truth. Israel sometime in the Bible was split into the northern and southern kingdoms. Now the north kingdom, this is what they believe. The north kingdom was called Israelites. So we'll put I here. And then the south, they were called Jews. Why? Because Judah and Benjamin, which made up the south, Judah and Benjamin, so thus Jews. Northern Israel, it was not known as Judah, but rather Israel, so thus Israelites. So they believe that there was a split. And then what they're trying to teach is that if you study later on in history, which now is not really history, this is now a myth, sometime in the split from the Israelites and Jews, then they're going to try to trace whether black Hebrew movement, whether replacement theology, or this Ashkenazi Jewish garbage and uh because from the Khazar theory and all this kind of stuff that's where all those wacky heresies come from and a lot of them they like to start out with this that jews are not israel because there was a split however the bible shows differently look at galatians chapter 1 and verse 13 for ye have heard of my conversation in time past in the what jews religion okay so saul excuse me paul was from the jews religion how that beyond measure I persecuted the church of God and wasted it, and profited in the what? Jews' religion. Now notice Paul's bragging about being in the Jews' religion as a faithful chief member from, with the Jews, above many my equals in my own nation. So he's saying the Jews' nation here. He's above them. Being more exceedingly zealous of the tradition of my fathers. Now let's see how Paul explains that being a very religious zealot in the Jews religion, what he calls it, of his nation, the Jews. Look at 2 Corinthians 11, verse 22. 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 22. You'll notice that the word of God is all over. The word of God is all over. It's going to show that in 2 Corinthians 11 and as well as Galatians 1, that Israelites are known as Jews. Look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11 and verse 22. Are they Hebrews? So am I. Are they Israelites? What did Paul say? So am I. Notice, are they the seed of Abraham? What does he say? So am I. So he believes the Jews are from the seed of Abraham. That's a big debunking against replacement theology where they believe the Christian church is the real physical seed of Abraham, not the Jews. But Paul says, no, the Israelites are the physical seed of Abraham. Christian church, what we are as the seed of Abraham is a spiritual seed, not physical. Look at Romans chapter 11, verse 1. Here's the second case. Look at Romans chapter 11 and verse 1. Now, this is just one verse. <laughs> If you want one verse that debunks this nonsense, just look at Romans 11.1. 1. That will easily debunk it. So they believe the southern kingdom is Benjamin and Judah, right? And from these people came out Jews. And these Jews are not Israelites. Look at this now. Romans 11.1. 1. I say then, hath God cast away his people? God forbid. For I also am a what? Israelite. But look at this Israelite. Now remember, these cults teach Judah and Benjamin are Jews, and then the rest of the ten tribes are from Israel, Israelites. No, 
Benjamin, the, this southern kingdom here, the Jews, are Israelites. Look at this. For I also am an Israelite of the seed of Abraham, of the tribe of who? Benjamin. Boom. This so-called southern kingdom of Judah and Benjamin, who are Jews, oh, they're not Israel. Yeah, they are. Paul says, I'm an Israelite from the tribe of Benjamin. That's just one verse, and you're done. Now go to Nehemiah 1. Nehemiah 1. Even the Old Testament, even the Old Testament. So yes, we do recognize there was a split. But you got to understand this, is that the Bible doesn't see a difference. Sometimes you'll see differences, but the Bible sees them as the same bunch of people as well. You're going to look at Nehemiah chapter 1, and look at verse 2 through 6. Nehemiah chapter 1 and verses 2 through 6. Notice what Nehemiah stated. He believed that his people were Jews and that he is from Israel, that they, Jews are from Israel. Israel and Jews are same. Look at Nehemiah chapter 1 verse 2. That Hanani, one of my brethren, came he and certain men of Judah. And I asked them concerning the Jews that had escaped, which were left of the captivity, and concerning Jerusalem. So notice that Nehemiah was asking about the welfare of the Jews, of his people, the Jews. Now keep reading, verse 3. And they said unto me, The remnant that are left of the captivity there in the province are in great affliction and reproach. The wall of Jerusalem also is broken down, and the gates thereof are burnt with fire. And it came to pass when I heard these words that I sat down and wept and mourned certain days and fasted and prayed before the God of heaven. So now Nehemiah is brokenhearted about his people, the Jews, and requests prayer concerning the welfare of his people, the Jews. But look what he calls them. Keep reading, verse 5. And I said, I beseech thee, O Lord God of heaven, the great and terrible God that keepeth covenant and mercy for them, that love him and observe his commandments. Let thine ear now be attentive and thine eyes open that thou mayest hear the prayer of thy servant, which I pray before thee now, day and night, who's he beseeching the welfare of his people who are called what? For the children of who? Israel thy servants. And confess the sins of the children of who? Israel, which we have sinned against thee. Look at that. Again, Jews are Israel. Nehemiah 1, we saw that. Not only Nehemiah 1, go to Nehemiah 2. Nehemiah chapter 2. I mean, for crying out loud, man, crying out loud. Look at De Nehemiah chapter 2, verse 10. Verse 10. When Sambalat the Horonite and Tobiah the servant, the Ammonite, heard of it, it grieved them exceedingly that there was come a man to seek the welfare of the children of who? Israel. So again, seeking the welfare of the children of Israel. But this welfare of the children of Israel, they're called Jews again, because look at verse 16. And the rulers knew not whither I went or what I did, neither had I as yet told it to the who? Jews, nor to the priests, nor to the nobles. Verse 17, then said I unto them, ye see, how the ye see the distress that we are in, how Jerusalem lieth waste. By the way, notice Jews are connected to Jerusalem here in verse 16 through 17. And look at 10 through 11. 10, Israel, right? Verse 11, Israel's connected to who? Jerusalem. See that? Look, Jerusalem belongs to Jews. Jerusalem belongs to Israel. And Jews and Israel are the same bunch. Doesn't deny that fact. So Nehemiah chapter 2 as well. Now, if you think that's not good enough, look at John chapter 1. John chapter 1. The evidence is overwhelming, people. John chapter 1. You have to be biblically, deliberately, deliberately, biblically ignorant because you want to go in, because you want to be biased toward your belief in following your good godly pastor, Satan Anderson, and Tex Mars, and Black Hebrew Movement, and Garner Ted Armstrong's group, and all this bunch. You're, you're just so blind that you want to follow those guys. The blind leading the blind, and the Bible says both shall fall into a ditch. Look at John chapter 1, verse 49. Jesus is known as what? Nathanael answered and saith unto him, Jesus, Rabbi, thou art the Son of God, thou art the King of what? Israel. So Jesus is known as the King of Israel. So Nathanael recognized our people was looking for this King 
the king of Israel. We've always wanted that. But the Israelites who wanted their king are also known as the Jews. Look at John 18. John 18. John chapter 18, verse 38. John chapter 18, verse 38. So now we see John 1 and John 18. John 1 and John 18. Look at John chapter 18 and verse 38. Pilate saith unto him, What is truth? And when he had said this, he went out again unto the Jews and said unto them, I find in him, Jesus, no fault at all. What did he say about Jesus? But ye have a custom that I should release unto you one at the Passover. Will ye therefore that I release unto you who? The king of the who? Jews. A Roman pagan even knew better than Christian pastors today. A Roman pagan knew that Israel and Jews, their king, was the same thing. The only people who don't are some weird Christian pastors, if they are saved at all. Now look at Romans chapter 10. Romans chapter 10. I mean, look at this. The, el the evidence here is overwhelming. But let's keep on going right here. Let's go to Romans now, chapter 10, Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Notice that, again, there is no difference right here with Israel and Jew. They are pretty much interchangeable. Romans chapter 10 and verse 1. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for who? Israel is that they might be saved. All right, Paul had a burden for Israel. But notice verse 2, For I bear them record that they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. For they, being ignorant of God's righteousness and going about to establish their own righteousness, have not submitted themselves unto the righteousness of God. Paul had a burden for his people, Israel, who kept rejecting salvation because he knew that salvation was given to Israel as well, not, as, not to just Gentiles, but to Israel too. But look what he calls Israel. Look at verse 12. For there is no difference between the who, Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. See that? When Paul had a burden for Israel to receive salvation, he realized that they were also known as Jews. So Romans chapter 10 shows that Israel is the same as Jews. Now we're going to look at one more. I mean, the evidence should convince you. Now go to Hebrews 11. Hebrews. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 8. Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. By the way, look at this passage. This passage proves that even though that God knows there was a split, so the, the Bible realizes there was a split with north and south. So there was Judah and Benjamin and the remaining ten tribes. But you know what he believes? He sees that even though they split it, he still sees that as one and same Israel. He still sees them as one and same Israel. You want to bet? Go to Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 8. Notice right here in chapter, excuse me, it shouldn't be chapter 11. I don't know why I wrote chapter 11. It should be chapter 8. Chapter 8. Chapter 8 and verse 8. Notice what the Bible gave a new covenant. He's giving a new covenant to Israel and Judah. Verse 8, For finding fault with them, he saith, Behold, the days come, saith the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and with the house of Judah. Here we can see the heretics going, Oh, see, there's a difference with Israel and Judah, the Jews. Uh-uh, keep reading right here. He makes a new covenant with these two splits, north and south, Israel and Judah, but he still sees that new covenant he made with Israel and Judah as one and same Israel. Because keep reading. Not according to the covenant that I made with their fathers in the day when I took them by the hand to lead them out of the land of Egypt, because they continued not in my covenant, and I regarded them not, saith the Lord. For this is a covenant that I will make with who? The house of Israel after those days. Did it say house of Judah too, or just house of Israel? House of Israel. This new covenant, he first said the new covenant will be with the house of Israel and house of Judah. But as he continues to talk about this new covenant, 
he now doesn't see them as two distinct groups. He sees them as one and the same. He calls them house of Israel. So you see right here, even though they split, he still sees them as the one and same Israel right here. So they might argue, these cultics might argue, oh, you know, back then they were one and the same Israel. But after the Old Testament, they're not. What do you mean after the Old Testament? You saw New Testament, New Testament, New Testament. Not only just New Testament, but even Hebrews 8, which is future tribulation, <laughs> future time period. Every dispensation, Old Testament, church age, future tribulation, they're still considered to be the one and same Israel to God's eyes. Jews are Israelites. Israel, is, Israel composes of Jews.